What's up, everyone? I'm your host, Vic Choksi, and welcome to today's edition of Chalk Talk, brought to you by Sports Intel. Today's guest is my guy, Josh Applebaum, or as they like to call him in the gambling world, Josh Insights. You know, Josh and I first met when he was at the Action Network. Now he's over at VEASAN doing some great things, and he's also written a gambling book, The Everything Guide to Sports Betting, so make sure you check that out on Amazon. So, you know, let's kick this off. Josh, how you doing today, my man? Vic, I'm doing great, and yeah, you and I have been friends in the industry a while, and uh, it's great to finally do uh, an official pod together, so thank you for having me on Chalk Talk today. No, I know how busy you are, so thanks so much. I appreciate your time, and, and before we jump into some games, I wanted to ask you a couple quick questions, man. First things first, how did you get into gambling? Like, was it were you the kid like doing gambling in high school, college, Western Union type stuff, or a little bit post college? Like, how'd you get into the game? Yeah, so what's funny is you know a lot of people I talk to they have these great stories about you know I was uh, I was betting point spreads when I was three years old on my grandfather's lap, and you know in eighth grade I was you know leading pick 'em pools and stuff like that. I'm not one of those guys. I mean, I kind of um, I fell into sports betting. I mean. Uh, it wasn't exactly some, the funny thing is like, you know, I love it and it's my career and I'm so lucky to be in this space, but it wasn't something I really set out to do. So, you know, I grew up in Western Massachusetts, big, you know, sports fan in general, you know, my love of sports played them, you know, wasn't very good at them, but um, I wanted to stay in them somehow. And I, I was an English major. I was a decent writer. I went to the university of Vermont. Uh, I wanted to be a sports journalist cover the Red Sox or the Patriots or Bruins or Celtics. And the funny thing is, you know, um, Vic, I'm 33. So when I graduated uh, from UVM in 2009, it was the height of the Great Recession. And there were no jobs to be found, uh, you know, anywhere, really. So um, I moved to Boston with a bunch of my friends. And I, I'm from Western Mass. And, you know, if you know Massachusetts at all, Western Mass and Boston are, like, completely different, you know. I'm from kind of the, the sticks, the boonies, the woods, <laughs> Uh, pretty much as far west as you can go before you hit New York. And, um, yeah, so me and my buddies, we moved to Boston when we were 21, um, right after, right out of college. And that's kind of where I really started betting on sports. And I had a buddy of mine, um, his name was Richie and he kind of got me into it and we bet, you know, we made all the mistakes. The funny thing is, you know, I ended up, you know, being in this industry and learning a bunch of things over the years. And it's funny, I've been in, you know, almost, you know, 12 years now at this point, but when I first started, you know, I made every mistake that I learned now to kind of impress on new betters to, to not make those mistakes. So, you know, I bet every Red Sox game because I love the Red Sox. I bet yeah. the Patriots blindly. And the funny thing is betting the Patriots blindly, you know, actually wasn't that bad. Uh, but the moral of the story is, you know, um, I made all these mistakes. I never really won at all when I first started, but I love the sweat. I immediately became addicted to having action on a game and getting all in on whoever you're betting on and the thrill of, of, of sweating a game and having action. I immediately fell in love with it. And then I got very lucky. You know, I, I worked in um, the restaurant industry. I applied to a bunch of jobs within writing and didn't get anything. And I, I basically had a blog um, where I kind of just talked about sports. And then I applied to a Craigslist ad in 2011. Uh, the funny thing is that was when the Bruins were in the Stanley Cup Finals. And I had this interview at this uh, company called Sports Insights. And I got the job. And it was a entry-level position, really just, you know, replying to emails and um, kind of, you know, writing blog posts, doing a lot of the, you know, live chats and stuff like that. And I, it was a customer service position. And just slowly throughout the years working at um, a sports analytics company, I kind of learned contrarian betting, which is kind of what I'm known for, and then data-driven betting, where really I'm removing all bias, looking at line movement. You know, I'm not a handicapper, so I think some people think I am, but I'm really not. I'm not, I don't set power ratings. I don't come up with my own numbers on games. You know, uh, what I'm doing is I'm monitoring the market, reading the market, and kind of identifying where the sharp action is and uh, which side is, you know, a public play, a sharp play, and try to make smart bets. So, yeah, just in the industry, been there, um, you know, for, for quite a bit now. And, uh, Vic, you and I, uh, Sports Insights got bought out by Action Network, and then yeah. you and I were there for a bit, and then I got laid off from Action Network in 2000, and just about a year ago. Um, and that was a tough time for me. I had never been laid off before, and um, you're kind of questioning – you know, I moved in with my girlfriend and I'm like, man, how do I pay rent? I, you know, yeah. it was a very tough time. And um, luckily, uh, and I would stress this to anyone new in the industry, you know, things happen and just stick with it because um, I applied to a million jobs when I was unemployed 
and uh, and I, I somehow got hired by VEASAN, and um, it's kind of changed my life, and I'm so happy and lucky to work at VEASAN and, you know, work with Michael Lombardi on the Lombardi line, and uh, it really was a uh, an incredible stroke of luck. You know, I was never down as, you know, I was so down when I got laid off, and now here I am, uh, got kind of lucky here, and, um, you know, happy to be uh, in the sports betting space, and you, were, you and I were joking before the pod, you know, thank God we have sports back, and, you know, we had it, they were gone for however long that was, what, five months, and, um, you know, we're so glad to have them back, so, yeah, kind of, that's just my backstory, I fell into it, um, and I think maybe, you know, writing my book, and kind of what I want to be is someone that you can trust, and is not going to uh, tout or lie, or, you know, I, I don't sell anything, my whole thing is, you know, I try to make, help people make smart bets by reading line movement, and kind of um, offering tips and bankroll management and stuff like that along the way. And I want to be known as someone who can kind of tell you where the sharp action is. And then remember, you know, sharps, they win 55 to 60%. They're going to lose 40%. The funny thing is I say, you know, this play is sharp and it loses. And it's like, you're an idiot. And it's like, no, actually, uh, you know, you're playing the long game here. So that's just kind of my thing. And, you know, again, I'm lucky to be uh, where I am. And uh, it was definitely a journey and not something that I set out to do, but I'm um, very lucky it, it, it turned out this way. No, thanks for sharing, man. That was awesome and uh, motivational. And I'm glad you landed on your feet at, at a great company. And you're doing your thing now, right? And it's nice to see you out there. And I'm definitely loving everything that you're putting out with VEASAN. So you mentioned it a little real quick before we jump into games. Tell me about the book, right? Let the listeners know a little bit about your book, like how that came about and, and where they can grab it. Yeah, thank you, Vic. It's called, uh, I don't know if I have a copy around here. I, was, I should have had it ready, but uh, yeah, put it I know, yeah. It's pretend- I have it, but my kid's sleeping. I don't want to wake her up. No, <laughs> no, no, you're a good father. No, you're, you're better <laughs> off. Your, your wife will be mad at you, so don't do it. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my book, uh, it's called The Everything Guide to Sports Betting. So it's funny. Um, when I was still at Action Network and Sports Insights, um, I did this thing called uh, Sports Betting Hangout. So like every night, uh, it was from 6.30 to 7, I would do this webinar with all of our members where I would kind of share my live odds page. I'd go through each game. I'd talk about where's the smart money in each game. And someone from Simon & Schuster somehow was in one of my hangouts or had read, I wrote an article called The Sharp Report. They somehow reached out to me. And this was, you know, right when, um, you know, sports betting legalization really took off where New Jersey won the Supreme Court case and PASPA was overturned. And they kind of saw the writing on the wall of, okay, this is an industry that's going to explode. We need to write a sports betting for dummies book, basically. Um, so they somehow found me and they kind of, someone, they were like, you know, hey, you, you sound kind of smart, but you also can talk like a regular guy and relate to regular people. And, you know, we want you to write the book. So um, it was crazy. I uh, had never written a book before. And I'm not going to lie to you, Vic, it was a very difficult process dealing with, you um, you know, uh, quotas and, you know, I'd have uh, 80,000 words and I had to have, you know, certain dates you had to have them by. And it made me realize how difficult writing a book is. And um, I, I lived in Gloucester on the North Shore of Boston and spent a summer, literally never, uh, summer of 2018, never leaving my apartment, writing every day. And um, my social life took a hit, but in retrospect, it was a good thing. So, uh, yeah, the book came out and basically, What it is, is, you know, it's especially geared toward new bettors. And I look at it as if you're a new better in one of these new legal states and you want to bet on sports, um, you're going to need to know the basics in order to to start betting on games. Because if you just start betting on your own, 99.9% chance you're probably going to lose. So my whole thing was, okay, let's let's teach the basics. You know, how are lines set? Why do lines move? Uh, What's a spread, a money line, a total, an over under? What's the juice? How do you shop for the best line? How do you manage your bankroll? Um, How do you go contrarian? How do you identify sharp action? How do I place a bet in person? Tips and strategies for all the major sports. So basically what I did is I kind of just put everything that I had learned working in the industry for about a decade into one one book. And again, it's it's more geared toward new bettors, but I still think even if you're a sharp better, there are a lot of strategies that I learned, little tips, systems along the way um, that have really cashed at a high rate. So uh, you know, that's kind of put it all together. It's now been out um, almost two years at this point and um, pretty good, um, well received, I would say. And uh, hopefully I can write another book at some point. But yeah, if you're, especially if you're in a new state and you need to know, I look at it as what are some things I wish people told me 
when I was first starting to get into betting and yeah. like, you know, okay, avoid parlays. Okay. Why? You know, I, I want to get rich and I want to hit this 10 teamer tonight, Vic. Well, <laughs> yeah, but it provides about a 30%, you know, hold percentage to the sports book. So just things like that. Um, and I think the important thing is, you know, and I know, you know, this Vic too, we're so great. We're so lucky to be in this space, but there's so much noise, you know, there's so many touts, scam decappers. You don't know what to believe and what not to believe. So I just want to be straightforward, transparent, hopefully offer some tips and make it, uh, make that learning curve a little bit easier, especially for new betters. Awesome, man. I love it. It was a great book. I actually read it because you hooked me up with it. I appreciate that. So, uh, if anybody's out there just starting off, I definitely recommend grabbing your book. And even if you're not starting off, like you said, there was some good things. I mean, I've been, a gambler, quote unquote, losing a lot of money since I was in college, right? Sending Western Union money to like offshores and yep. <laughs> getting accounts going. But there was some, like, through the years, you learn a lot of stuff, right? And I wish I had the book early so I didn't actually have to pay for all those, like, yeah. lessons, right? So that's where I think your book helped help me a lot and, and where it can come in handy for a lot of people that are out there. So, you know, I, I love it. Let's look at some games now. So, as you mentioned, me and you are kind of similar. When it comes to NFL betting, yep. I look at a lot of contrarian stuff, reverse line movement, sharp money. It's not the end all be all, but it's definitely a tool in the toolbox, right? And, and that's exactly. literally one of the reasons I'm excited to talk to you today and, and pick your brain about some of the games that I was looking at. So, you know, the games that I'm loving, I'm going to just spit out there, get your thoughts on it. At the end, maybe you can give me your, your favorite pick for the weekend, but let's jump into it a little bit. I'll start with the Packers at the Saints. And so I will tell, I will let you go first and then, you know, maybe just give you some insights or see what we chop from there. Sure. So yeah, this is obviously going to be one of your most heavily bet games of the week, other than that Monday nighter. Um, and really this game intrigues me because, you know, the way, it, the way I view it is, you know, it opened with new Orleans about a three and a half point favorite at home. So right off the bat, you did see a little bit of smart money, grab the hook with the plus three and a half with green Bay. Um, I think the average, you know, Joe better says, give me Aaron Rodgers in the points all day. Um, Packers may very well cover. And if you did get the Packers to me, you had to get the plus three, uh, plus three and a half, excuse me. But I tell you what, Vic, the way this is trending, I, I, I'm going to go Saints here, Saints minus three. The reason is, you know, the more I look at this game, it's a Sunday night game, most heavily bet game of the day. Uh, you have about three out of four bets grabbing the Packers. So the odds makers open this line, you know, hanging the hook there, the three and a half with the Saints, knowing that the Saints were off a bad loss to the Raiders, knowing that the Packers have looked great through two games. Flood of money from pretty much every average Joe in the world on the Packers. Line is now down to three. A lot of books I'm seeing are now minus three Saints, but juiced up to minus 115, minus 120. So even yeah. though you're getting all this betting here on the Packers, the liability with the juice is still toward the Saints. So by no means do I like this play. By no means uh, am I going to enjoy sweating it, but I am going Saints minus three because they're kind of what I call a contrarian favorite, a fade the trendy dog opportunity where I love betting dogs when they're undervalued, when they're gross, when the public doesn't want to touch them. But when a dog becomes kind of a public uh, team, they lose a lot of their value in general. So everybody's betting um, the Packers, yet the line is kind of still at three and even trending maybe back up to three and a half. So I'll take the Saints. Again, this is a situation spot, too, for me where everybody's saying Drew Brees is old and he can't throw the ball. They're coming off a short week and a loss. Packers are riding high. But yet, oddsmakers opened it. Three and a half are still around three, and it stayed where it's at. Um, also, maybe no Devontae Adams for Green Bay. So, again, this is a gross play, but when you're contrarian better like me, you learn to love those gross, gross plays. So I'm going to go Saints minus three, um, even though I definitely uh, am not going to enjoy sweating it. To me, that, that's where the value is. But what do you think, Vic? See, this is why I have you on my pod. This is why, literally, I said, I think like you now, maybe because of the book and maybe because I've been following you, but I love the Saints this weekend. Literally because of all the reasons you said. There's recency bias. Everyone's on the pack. Pack have looked great, but to me, they've beaten some kind of weaker squads, right? The Saints have a real secondary. And to me, like you said, everyone's kind of saying Drew Brees is washed up, but Drew Brees and and Payton will be ready for this game. Sean Payton's, what, 30-18 and 18 ATS after a loss. And so at home, imagine if this was pre-COVID. They were at home at the Dome Sunday Night Football. This line would be like four, five, you know, just the crowd would be there. And, and so to me, we're getting the Saints in a really, really good spot. 
I think the Joe is going to be like an 80-20 game too, but yeah. come, come Sunday night football, right? So the odds, may, the books are going to need the Saints. And so I'm grabbing the Saints minus three. I'm loving this game. Are you in the Circle Million or any of the contests by any chance? Or this I'm year? not, and I every year I I, uh, I say I'm going to do it. I didn't. Yeah. But we, me and you got to get in there, Vic, because we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it next year. We'll, next we'll year. talk, man, because I'm penciling this game in as of now. I, it's one of my games uh, that, in my top five. So I'm glad you're thinking like me on this one. It'll be interesting. I, I want to see if all the games that I have circled were, were, were going to be similar. But the next game that I love is the Giants and the Niners. And so I will tell you a little bit, just I'm on the Niners. I've been on them since the beginning of the week. We kind of knew about all these injuries, right? And so I, it's nothing new to me, but the line is now down to three and a half. I grabbed them at four and a half. I think the Giants have played a lot better than the final scores have indicated in their first two games. And I, I see them as a live dog. I think they can win this game straight out. So just wanted to pick your brain on the Niners a little bit. So I'm right there with you. Yeah, Niners are another, um, or sorry, the Giants are another team that I'm looking at for sure. You know, one thing to keep an eye out too, Vic, I'm sure, you know, you've see, read a lot about this on Twitter and kind of hashtag gambling Twitter. This is like a big thing this week. But teams that are 0-2, uh, either straight up or against the spread even, have a ton of value in week three. You know, we saw with the Dolphins last night, Dolphins Thursday night, they're 0-2, they're going to Jacksonville. That line was pretty much three. It came back down a little bit to two and a half late where um, obviously, you know, the Dolphins rolled in that one. But to me, that's a good sign because with this historical trend, if you're 0-2, public doesn't want anything to do with you. That's yeah. going to create value to buy low on a lot of these teams in general. So I'm right there with you. You know, uh, this is an obvious thing, but, you know, San Fran, depending on where you're looking at, you know, I'm looking at San Fran. They opened like minus six and a half. That was right before you saw all these injuries take place. So a combination, number one, San Fran is down a ton of players. I could read them all to you, Vic, but like, yeah, they're going to, Mullins is starting a quarterback, Bosa's out. Um, they lost Richard Sherman, uh, you know, uh, a while ago, but really they have a massive list of injuries here. Mostert, Coleman, um, they're down a ton of guys. You've also seen, I will give Kittle, exactly. Kittle's out. Um, and, and also San Fran's complaining about the turf there. Exactly. I don't like I don't like that either as a team. You're already kind of, you know, building up an excuse if you lose the game. But um, maybe San Fran wins by three. Uh, maybe it's a close game. But I love grabbing the points here. I'm right there with you. Um, you. You still have a slight majority of bets backing San Fran. Public just still can't stand the Giants and thinks they're terrible. And even with all these guys out, they're still the 49ers. And you think, like, they're going to pull it out. But that line has really moved toward the Giants. Combination of injuries and some sharp money grabbing this number. I'm with you. I think four and a half. I jumped on the four and a half as well. To me, that's your best spot. But even, you know, I see some fours. It's mostly three and a halves. Um, even though you're getting kind of beat by the closing line and not getting a good number, I'd still grab the points more than I'd rather uh, lay them in this spot too. So uh, so I'm with you. Go G-Men, and hopefully Danny Dimes doesn't throw uh, three interceptions. In the red zone, right? Yeah. That's, that's what's been killer. No, I, I love that, man. So two more games. Of course, we got to talk my Bears a little bit. And so... Bears, Falcons, the Falcons are 0-2, but they're favored against the 2-0 Bears, right? Julio Jones is got a little iffy, questionable with a hamstring injury. The thing that concerns me the most is the Bears' offense. Uh, the, the Falcons are giving up 28, 29 a game. Can the Bears get to 28 points? Like that, of course, you don't know what you're going to get with the Chicago offense week in and week out. As much as I love them, as much as I'm rooting for Mitch, their defense is still one of the best in the game, and I think it's getting better every single week. But I'm not sold on the offense. So just I'm going to sit that game out because I'm biased. Obviously, I'm rooting for the Bears. But what are your thoughts on the Bears-Falcons game? So this one is tough for me. Chicago's 2-0, and Atlanta's 0-2. So just from the standpoint of a buy low, sell high week three situation, to me, Atlanta you know, would be uh, a team that I would look to to buy low on. Uh but I am going to go Bears. You know, again, this is I wouldn't consider this one of my favorite plays or top plays or anything like that. But the Bears are criminally contrarian in this game. I mean, you have three out of four bets, if not more, taking the Falcons. Um, and again, you know, being contrarian isn't just I'm going to go against what everyone else is doing. You need an element of, you know, sharp action or some sort of, you know, reverse line movement, steam moves, you know, line freeze, something, divisional dog, low total, whatever. You got to layer on reasons, not just straight contrarian. But 
Um, what I do kind of like about Chicago, not only are they only getting, you know, about a quarter of bets, but kind of the three and a half has been scooped up here with Chicago because a lot of these books were, you know, three up to three and a half, three and a half back down to three. The fact that it's gone back and forth to me, even though you have such heavy betting on Atlanta, kind of tells me the hook there is key. Um, and again, I think on the surface, you say, you know, Bears are a low scoring team. They got a good defense and, you know, Atlanta's off that awful loss and, you know, they got to bounce back in this one, which may be the case. Um, but also, I think the Bears kind of slow down that offense maybe a little bit. And I just am not going to lay points with Atlanta. I don't really, they're kind of in that, um, you know, I was looking at the, the uh, Cleveland Browns game where they're minus seven against Washington. And exactly. Washington plus seven. Like, I think that's value, a value play as well. So um, I don't like it. I will preface this by saying Michael Lombardi, my guy, uh, he is on Atlanta laying the points here. And I think you can make cases for that. Um, but for me, it's hard to lay points with the team when you've kind of had some liability or buyback on their number. Like if Atlanta was three, now they're up to five. You know, I can make a clear case that sharp money's moved that number in their favor. To me, this is more natural, like public betting Atlanta really heavy. And it's kind of it, go to three and a half, come back down to three. So I guess what I'm getting at is I'll go Chicago plus three and a half. Um, and again, not my favorite play, but I, to me, that would be the, the value play in my opinion. No, I love what you said because I was thinking about the Browns and the Falcons as two teams. I like as dogs, but I don't like as favorites. Yep. We saw the Browns last week, perfect situation, rookie quarterback on the road at home, and they still got backdoored because the Browns always do that. The Falcons always do that as favorites, right? And so, yeah, I agree. If it was any other team, I would bet against the Bears big in this game, but I just can't trust the Falcons, man. But that, that was really good insight. The last game before I ask for your pick of the week is the big Monday night showdown. I got to get your thoughts on the Ravens and the Chiefs, man. I, I like the Ravens initially. A little scared by the hook, but the Chiefs are like a trendy dog, right? And they ha they didn't look that good last weekend. And to me, the Ravens' defense should be able to contain them a little bit, and they got the O to keep up with them. So just wanted to pick your brain on that. Yeah, I'm going to go Ravens with you. Um, am I crazy to lay points against Patrick Mahomes? Very, very well may be. Yeah. Um, but kind of what I look at this game is – um, this is a classic example of what you mentioned, Vic, a fade the trendy dog opportunity where, uh, you have in a Monday night game, and you got to remember, you know, going contrarian Thursday night, um, you know, Sunday night, Monday night, it's always great in the NFL because every NFL game is heavily bet, but it's these prime time games where you can really take advantage of public bias because average Joe's are coming home from work and betting these games because they're in prime time and they're, you know, there's no other uh, competing games to go against. So what I'm looking here is uh, Baltimore opened, depending on where you're looking at, three, even I'm seeing some two and a halfs they opened at. And you have three out of four bets, clear majority here grabbing Patrick Mahomes. And again, how can you not grab Mahomes getting points? It seems like, yeah. and this is another thing I talk about in my book. If it seems too good to be true, Vic, you and I both know it almost always is. So yeah. it opens two and a half Baltimore. Everybody's betting KC in primetime getting points, yet the line has moved to Baltimore minus three and a half. So it seems to me, sharp reverse line move away from the public side Chiefs toward Baltimore at home, only getting a third of bets in primetime in an extremely heavily bet game. And also the books are just, you want the three and a half in the hook with uh, with KC, come and get it. That, that three and a half has been out there forever. So it seems to me the books are taunting you and saying, you know, come get it. You want a three? Here's the hook in the three and a half. That looks fishy to me. So, uh, so I'm going to lay it here with Baltimore. And uh, when Patrick Mahomes is a fourth quarter comeback win, I'll, I'll probably regret it. But the sure. play to me is definitely Baltimore laying the points. That that's about as sharp as a play as you're going to find, Vic. I agree. That's one of my top five games as well this weekend. So I hope everything we said uh, comes true <laughs> for Monday. But man, with with Mahomes, you just never know, man. That throw he made against the Chargers. I mean. Again, he, he does that every week, but it, it's just amazing to see. So let's hope that the Ravens can take care of business. All right, man, before we wrap up, I would love to hear your favorite pick. It can be one of the games we talked about, whatever you have circled for this weekend. Yeah, so my favorite pick, I'll give you two of them. One yeah. is uh, the Houston Texans plus the points. You know, I'm looking at this game in terms of uh, of extremely lopsided game toward the Pittsburgh Steelers, obviously, 
Steelers are looking good. You know, they're undefeated. Uh, you look at Houston and they're 0-2, but I don't think Houston is a regular 0-2 team. Um, yeah, they haven't looked great, but who have they played, Vic? The two best the teams best in the NFL. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, they played the Chiefs and they played the Ravens and lost and failed to cover both. But uh, I, I, basically, the I don't think they're your average 0-2 team. So I'm buying low on Houston. Uh, they're also and they fit that this model of 0 and 2 straight up and 0 and 2 ATS in a week three game, um, but it's not just that. It's also a pretty sharp move here toward Houston, where Pittsburgh opened depending on where you're looking minus six at home. This line is now down to four and a half. I'm even seeing some fours out there. If you can get a four and a half with uh, Houston in a uh, in an 0-2 spot in a desperation type play, uh, that's what I'm going to grab. I wouldn't be surprised if they win, you know, but even uh, lose by three, get the with a four and a half, lose by four. That's what I'm looking at. And then my other one, Vic, is uh, Buffalo Bills. Bills are a fade the trendy dog contrarian favorite as well, where the public is just falling in love with the Rams. You know, they have the names that you love, you know, Donald and Jalen Ramsey and big star players. They're off to a two and zero start, but kind of the way you look at, um, you look at Houston where they're zero and two, but they lost to some really good teams. Uh, the Rams are 2-0, and but it, at the time, it's like, oh, they beat the Cowboys, and oh, they beat the Eagles. Both are great. Sure. They're not great teams that I think we thought they were. The Cowboys have a porous defense, and um, you know, you're looking at the Eagles, who have serious problems. So I think their 2-0 and is kind of a little bit inflated. Um, and, and I'm looking at Buffalo as kind of a buy low off a public line move, contrarian favorite at home. You have heavy betting on, on the Rams. It's also a West Coast team going east for a one o'clock game in a tough environment, even though not all the fans will be there. Game open minus three Buffalo bills. It's down to two. Now even seeing some, uh, now it's starting to scare me a little bit now how, how much it's moving. So I'll, I'll preface that, but um, I'm buying low on the bills. If you can get them a deflated uh, money line price or minus one and a half minus two, uh, that's where I'm going to go. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to put my faith in Josh Allen, always a, a risky proposition, but uh, those are the two I'm looking at the bills uh, and also uh, the Houston Texans. No, I'm so gra- glad you brought up the Bills because honestly, that's my two fav- second favorite pick of the weekend. So I love the Giants, like a, like we talked about. I grabbed them at four and a half, and I took the Bills minus two already for all the reasons you stated. And to me, we're getting value on Buffalo, man. That defense is nasty, and like you said, the Rams haven't impressed me. Even last week, if it wasn't for Carson Wentz's turnovers. The Eagles literally, after everything, had a chance to win that game and, and, and to cover. So uh, I'm selling high on the Rams as well, and the Bills is my second favorite pick. So I'm loving it, man. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. It, it was fun chopping it up with you. Next year, I think me and you got to join the circle together, man. Yeah. Let's see you know. I'm in. We got to figure a name. Uh, I don't know where, what we'll name it, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, Vic. And thanks for having me on Chalk Talk, and uh, keep up the great work because uh, – Always love talking games with you, and I think you and I have a similar uh, similar viewpoint in terms of contrarian and sharp action, and uh, it's always great to see what you're on and love when we overlap. So thanks for having me on today. Well, thanks again. Stay safe, and we'll chat soon, and good luck this weekend. Thanks, Vic. You too. Thanks, Josh.